Here are my stencils and the image that I based my stencils off of. So there's my original design and each of these stencils are separated by color or value. One thing of note is that I have what are called registration marks along the sides of my stencils. So you see at the edges of each of these, I have little markings that will allow me to line up each layer so that they should line up if I did that correctly. First, I'd like to demonstrate a few methods that use typical drawing materials, paint or drawing ink. Well, one of the things I first do if I lay down my stencil, I might mark marks on the paper with my registration marks. I keep them small so that they'll be easy to remove. If you are stenciling this onto another surface, like a wall, um, you don't necessarily have to do this. It might help. You can, and I suggest, especially if this is new, um, to go ahead and tape down your stencil so that it doesn't move while you're working. Um, I'm just using some scrap washi tape that I have on hand. Something that's not going to uh, rip up my stencil later, something with a soft tack. For this first one, I kind of want to show a couple things that I might consider using. I have a couple brushes on hand, as well as other materials such as a sponge or a toothbrush. And so I'll show you a few of these right now. So if you look for stencil brushes, a lot of them are designed in such a way where they're flat um, with bristles that are kind of rounded. And that is actually uh, to make stenciling down into a stencil a lot easier. So usually what I'll do, I'll move this a little closer so you can see maybe, is I might have a palette or some kind of container with ink and I will pounce a stencil brush here and kind of making sure you don't go side to side. You want to kind of pounce your ink or paint directly down on the stencil. I'm using kind of a dry brush here, but if you want to, you can experiment and see what happens if you use a, a wet brush. And one of the reasons um, I do like these brushes a little bit is that it helps you work downward. And the thing is sometimes if you like brush like this and you have a lot of ink on here or paint on here, you can get it trapped under your stencil and you don't really want to do that because then it'll become a little bit blurred or messy. So if you do have more of a, a detailed stencil, that is why. You kind of want to work down. I think it helps to use, start with more ink than what I did. And maybe even something like a, a lower body or softer body ink might be better than a heavy body, but uh, it's up to you. So you can use this if you are also monotyping. Um, so you can use this with just about any kind of paint oil paint. You might be able to get away with watercolor so long as it's not watery because if it's a watery watercolor it'll bleed. It could soak into if you have a pencil or a paper stencil. You can ruin that. So let's take a quick look to see what that one looks like. So, so far so good. Not the most even application but um, you can go back and work later or you can do that on purpose. You don't have to if you want to play around with seeing what happens if you apply ink unevenly, that's that's one way to work with this material too. So I am kind of looking back at my registration marks um, that I've made on the four sides. So that really helps me be able to put this right back where I want it to. So another easy tool is also the foam brush, something that's a little bit squishier. This one's been a little bit used, so it's a little more chewed up than one you might buy in a store. Sometimes I dampen it just a hair to make it a little bit more flexible. Um, but I'll do that over here. So I've watered down the paint. I'm using a naphtha crimson. So I usually try to pounce it 
try to go up to the edges. If you kind of, I like to work right up to the edge. Things like this, you'll probably have to spend a little bit more time on are these all the small corners. So you just want to make sure you get those just because sometimes the ink doesn't want to get down there. And it will depend on the paint you're using and the thickness of your stencil. I'm using a cardstock paper, so it's a little thicker than something like a printer paper or um, a thinner vellum of some kind, parchment paper. Ignoring that I water down the paint a lot. And when you do add water, it does have a tendency to have a to bleed. So that's the that's why I sometimes don't suggest watercolor, but if you don't mind having a soft image. If you are gonna add water to, to kind of loosen a paint, you might let it sit for a little bit um, after you mix it with water before you just go right to your paper. Okay. One way that's also pretty nice and simple is actually just using a, like a spare sponge of some kind. Um, I've dampened a sponge in advance. Clearly I've been using it for other art projects, so it's a little uh, dark um, from black ink I was using with this but you can kind of just blot up that. And just like the foam brush, you can apply it straight down. Um, if you do have watery kinds of ink that you're using, one thing that sometimes I do with my stencils is I'll apply some kind of clear coat in advance. I did use this gloss UV resistant, um, and I find that one coat is enough. You might apply multiple coats or you can use something like a spray shellac or spray polyacrylic. The next one I want to show is actually, I think I have taken acrylic ink and watered it down almost to like a, an ink-like quality, almost like heavy cream. Okay, it's a little lighter than heavier cream, but a heavy cream might be desirable. And this is uh, two ways to do spattering. So if you're trying to get kind of this like kind of thrown on aesthetic, this kind of wild splatter, Jackson Pollock like, or almost like to imitate a spray paint can without using spray paint, you can kind of dip a brush in some water and using your finger or another tool, kind of pull across. And of course, depending on the distance and how close it is, you kind of get different effects, but it can be very messy. But it can also look really cool depending on the stencil you have. This works better maybe for open spaces, and sometimes I just do this to add like a background before I add any layers. Of course, as you can see, if your stencil starts to lift up from your paper, you won't get as crisp or clear as an image. So sometimes it's good to hold down your stencil against the paper somehow. So if like this, it's only like one small area. So let's take a look. Now it's mostly my stencil that looks like it has an image on it. So let's see if that actually did anything for the image itself. Now that my stencil's a little wet, I didn't really pre-protect this on the side. Um, so as you can see, uh, during the time where it was kind of lifted up, you can see how marks got underneath and kind of sprayed across. So it's not crisp or clear unless you kind of flatten it and make sure that your stencil is right up against a surface. So you don't want that kind of gap between your stencil and your, your surface. So as you can see, the ones that kind of required a pushing down um, rather than a painterly effect seem to work better so far. Um, and then one other way I want to show is similar concept to that of um, screen printing a little bit without the traditional screen and that is just kind of using a kind of a squeegee like tool uh, in screen printing this is what a big squeegee looks like it's a rubber thing you hold it and you drag it across the surface 
Um, so for something like a small stencil, you can use something like a leftover mat board or an old gift card of some kind. Old credit cards, old IDs work just fine. Oh, one thing I realized before I move on, another way you can do spattering if like touching all the ink or paint sounds like terribly messy for you. Another thing you can do is have another like tool or instrument. Here I have a pencil and you can just like knock against it to kind of spray. And sometimes that has a different pattern because it has a different trajectory than that of like scraping a um, toothbrush with your fingers. So give it a try, see what happens. Back to the stenciling with something like this. I usually will have my palette. Maybe I'll lay out my ink. I usually try to have the scraper that's a little wider than the area I'm using. You want to be especially careful for this method if you are using something like a very delicate, um, like this one is a very lacy stencil. You might not be able to see it in this image. Uh, but something like this, I'd be nervous of doing this method on, but it's not impossible. But something like this, I think, is easy enough. So let me take this iTunes gift card. So sometimes if you have a, a paint, you might spread it out, knock it down so it's a little even, pick it up, have like a bead of paint. Just kind of, see how like this is actually like a loop that's sticking up? I either want to make sure that's down or maybe I'll scrape in the direction that won't go against the grain. But since I've already started this way. So I didn't have like a huge deposit of paint on this index, this card to start. <laughs> uh, so you might have to go in a couple different directions if you're doing this with your own paint by hand rather than a squeegee and screen printing. So that might have actually caused more ink than I wanted. There might be ink underneath. Let me see if my suspicions are right. Yeah. So with that, um, sometimes that lays down a, a much heavier layer of ink or paint. So um, it seeped underneath the stencil a little bit. But if you want more of a, a dimensional uh, stenciled like paint, uh, once this dries, this will be like uh, about the same thickness of my card uh, cardstock paper. So if you're careful and don't go about it as quickly as I did, sometimes you can get a really nice result. So that's at least one, two, three, four, five, kind of five or six different ways of using that. Um, another thing that I sometimes do is if you do not have spray paint, which is what a lot of traditional stencils are used for screen burning or like uh, spray paint. One thing that I sometimes make, I have like these small spray bottles that I've got at like a dollar store or Walmart used for like makeup or who knows what. Let me try this out. So this, I've mixed this with a little bit of black ink. I'm gonna move that to the side so we can kind of see this a little bit more. So this is kind of like a sprayer. I would say that this works a lot easier if you're spraying something that's like uplifted against a wall rather than spraying down onto something. So if you can find a way, if you are using any kind of spray, um, whether it's something like a squirt bottle or spray paint, is if you can get it at least a little bit elevated, if not perpendicular, just so sometimes you get more globs of spray. But hey, experiment, see what you like. So I've filled this up with a mixture of water and India ink by Speedball. So kind of similar to like the spray. So this is actually watered down, so it's uh, not gonna be pure black, but for something that says it's a stencil, gray stencil, that's what I'm using for. They do make a low tack adhesive um, called like stencil adhesive that you can find in some craft stores. And that's particularly useful for things that maybe aren't sitting flat if you're not working on a flat surface. Or if you are working on a flat surface and need your stencil to be plush. 
Although with something like this, where it's very fine, um, it might actually stick and rip up your stencil and you might have to repair it more. So let's see what happens. So the angle of how you spray it and um, how much you spray it can change the density. So let's see what happens if I like make it heavier like around his face. Ooh. Ooh okay, uh, let's see what happened. So maybe it's a little soft because it kind of spread under, but it kind of gives, gives you the overall stencil there. So I'm pretty pleased. My stencil started to curl a little bit. You can also use dry materials or drawing materials with your stencils. So for example, this is just a uh, chalk pastel. You can very gently kind of go over parts. This is a particularly hard stencil to use dry materials for. It's great if you have large open areas. Something like this stencil is great if, say, you have some kind of wet material. So that's not really working all that well. So I have, I have Tombow uh, dual brush pens. Um, so with this, very much like other things, I'm gonna use the brush side and kinda just color in using this. Now with something like this, what's hard is that I have such a delicate stencil that I had to be very careful, especially since it's not like adhering down very well. So I had to be cautious about how I apply this and with something like a brush pen, it's great because you can kind of turn it on its side and use it broadly. It, for these smaller areas, you can also kind of use the tip. Just remember with brush pens, don't press down very hard. Just light as a feather if you're using that tip. But sometimes it's easy to get up underneath the stencil. So yeah, this is a little bit harder, but it's not impossible. So if you are limited in terms of your materials, it's not impossible to do this with just markers. It's a lot easier for something like, say, shapes like this, <laughs> where it's broad. You can kind of get in there a little bit easier. So don't just count using stencils with markers and things like that. You just have to be patient. Uh, a lot of markers are also transparent, so you just want to be careful. Uh, one thing I do is I'll actually, if I have things like this, where it's uh, like stroke-like marks, um, I'll actually just kind of follow along with my marker rather than trying to go across it. So you just want to hold that stencil flush and uh, see what happens. Probably not the best for like an even application, but a couple seconds, let's take it off and see what it looks like. I usually like to brush away from the stencil, but if you come back to it, just make sure that you're pressing it down. It will pick up on your strokes if you're using something like this Tombow, because these are transparent. So yeah, so halfway, that looks decent. Right on. And that's where I have the pastel, that's a marker. I am gonna do a quick screen print. So what I need is some ink. I've got a squeegee. I've got um, some matte board squares. I have my stencil. And I have a piece of tracing paper that I have taped down. You can use a clear mylar paper as well. I have taped up part of my screen and now I'm going to attach this to the back side of my screen making sure that it's facing the direction that I want it to print in. So for me I want it to print this direction. So I'm going to, uh, you can use like some kind of removable tape. I prefer this clear packing tape. You actually want to put it like somewhere in the middle of the screen to get the most even print. You want to make sure you're not taping over your stencil by any means. So this is pretty close. I don't know if this is in the frame. Maybe not. So I am making sure this is flush. And really, you don't need to tape all of it. Um, it will actually end up sticking to um, 
for a little bit. And I'm going to tape up the side a little bit just so there's a little less for me to have to clean later. Uh, you also have to be careful if you do have open screen. If I put ink on here, it's going to go through that. So usually I will cover up around my stencil. If you do use packing tape, make sure you don't get this edge or any sharp materials right up against your screen or else you might risk damaging your screen. And I always make sure that these overlap a little bit. It's a minor thing, but sometimes I make sure that the last pieces of tape that go on will go in the direction of whatever squeegee I'm using. So the last ones I'm putting are like kind of running towards myself, which is how I'm going to be printing. You might see what I mean in a second. So, really quickly, I've got some old ink in here. It's a little thick actually because I haven't used it for a while. I'm going to lay out a bead of ink across here. to the side. I got my squeegee. Um, I'm going to actually spread it out so that it, the ink is the same width of my squeegee because if it's not in the same area as my squeegee it will have a tendency to skitter on here. Okay all right and I'm going to hold this at a 45 degree angle more or less and with even pressure I'm going to float right across I'm going to flood my screen first, and this will ensure that I have even ink throughout the entire stencil before I print it on anything. Alright, so that kind of covered my image, and I'm going to set this down and print right on top of that tracing paper. I'm going to lift it up. Let it go through. Things usually, something usually goes weird. <laughs> I think this is a really old screen and I'm thinking that uh, because I had used metallic ink in it before. Oh, it could also be that the stencil is a cardstock shape, so it's thicker than my usual stencils on a screen that I like to use. So I might actually have to go over it a few times. So it really depends. Oops. You want to go evenly. You don't want to stop in the middle. Let's see if that did anything. Okay, so it's starting to come through a little bit. It's not super even, but um, this will tell us where to print. So I'm going to lower this. I'm going to cover over my... Covering this up. Set this aside. And a little bit more ink. That's kind of a lot of ink, um, but it's not really going through all that easily. And I'm just kind of going to go ahead and just put a lot of ink on there. So I'm going to raise my screen. And this will, so long as you keep this tape down, this can tell you where your image is going to land. So this is how you can kind of register your image. This is an old failed print of a train, and I'm just going to see what the heck happens if I just put him right on top. So you can use this tracing paper as an overlay to see where the image is going to land. So I kind of want him right about there. Flip this over, put this down, take your squeegee and print. And let me see. I might have to go over it again. Well, it's moved, but um, so I might not use it right away here. I might go back if this dries again. I can go back over that again. Should have probably gone over a couple times right away. Okay, so let me try that one more time with another image. So first, remember to flood. You do this so that it doesn't dry out on the screen. I'm gonna do it a couple times just because this is a thicker stencil, more to dry up. I'm going to 
further. The only thing with tracing paper is that you really can't reuse it again. You can save it for other mixed media projects for sure. Usually if you have like a clear acetate or mylar, you can actually just wipe it down after, spray it with water, clean up the screen printing ink, and then reuse it again later. All right, so let's see this time. <laughs> I might even go back the other way just to. That tends to stretch the screen in another direction a little bit. Alright, so let's see if this worked. It's stuck to the page that's. Oh, it's really thick, but I think that actually did a better job. It's way thicker. I don't think this is like a great professional screen print here, but considering uh, the thickness of the stencil, I think this did a pretty good job for what I am looking for. So, Edgar Allan Poe, folks. I'm going to show you how I'm going to spray paint all four, five layers at once. I have a variety of different surfaces, so I'll walk through how I'm going to approach this. So, I've got my black layer, which might go on very last or second to last, depending on how their surfaces look. I have a white front, so like if I need more white, I have a secondary layer, so that might be last. Then I have my gray layer, uh, my white layer, and my red layer. Um, so uh, I'm going to grab my pencil and get started. Um, it's highly recommended if you are working with spray paint to work with a mask outdoors or with some place with good ventilation and it's also good to wear some kind of particulate mask with surfaces like just a plain piece of paper you might not need to have the initial white layer but if you're working on other surfaces and need that white color to have it show better you might start with the this as like a background shape layer so for this one i'm going to center it I think I'm going to have the heavier part down here. So I'm going to just like quickly mark it. I will say that what I'm going to be doing is flat. It's much easier to spray paint things when it is completely perpendicular. So I might be out of white, so I'm not going to do too many of these. Oh, but I might have just enough. Uh, the thicker you paint it, the longer it's going to take to dry, naturally. And if you're doing a lot of layers, it is best to wait for this to completely dry before you proceed. But of course, people who are out doing street art, they're not going to wait. That's why sometimes it's best to plan images where large portions of it doesn't necessarily overlap. Totally changes the mood. With this one, since the stencil goes off the paper, I'm just gonna mark the three places that line up. You can kind of play around if you like. What if you want it heavier in one place or looser in another? Okay. The last one here. There's some wet paint on this already. Some of the wet paint might get on here or even blend in with this. I think I'm just running out. Okay, so actually that one, I'm just gonna leave like that so it's not completely filled in. Might look cool. So that's one color. Make sure to, when you use this, to, uh, to make sure you turn it upside down. Uh, follow the directions on every can. It, usually that's turning this upside down until it runs clear. I'm going to go ahead and admit that this next layer I've been using, I had this tester Liquitex spray paint. The nozzle isn't really working all that well, so this might not work at all, but we'll find out. I've lined this up with the registration marks from the last stencil. 
this stencil is a little bit, bit rounded from when I used it for my other demos. If you do have like a stencil that's kind of poking up, you might put some double-sided tape underneath. I feel like I'm murdering it. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is a mess. Look at text, you gotta work on your demo nozzle. Maybe the uh, traditional spray nozzle is like trademarked and they're like, let's do this other thing. But whatever this is, it's not. Yeah, this looks like a murder scene. Okay. Which is appropriate for Poe, I guess. Well, that was promising for like five seconds. Okay. Well, there you go. Okay, so let me... Okay, so maybe I just... It's starting to flow a little bit now, so maybe I just need all that time to get going. Wow, okay, well, that's kind of a mess of the stencil, but hopefully with future layers, it won't be so bad. All right, let me try this other murder scene one. Line up the edges, the corners. Okay, let's see how this goes. Okay, it's kind of seems like it's going now. Okay, I'm gonna leave that. I didn't get all the corners. Try this one too. So I think red and blue will go well together. Okay, lining up the or edges. Okay. And you can see some of the extra paint on here is sliding off, so Okay, shaking it up and down, it's kind of working. Okay, I'm gonna let that one be kind of light. It is just splattering. It's okay. Okay. Go. Okay, murder chair. Okay. purposefully going light on this one just because I want to see what it's like if it's not so heavy. So I think that looks a little better actually. And maybe I'm gonna I think we'll go ahead and do that on this one. It's my original idea so as we'll keep building on that. It's actually starting to sound like it ran out. <laughs> oh well nice one it worked. All right, well, there's a red layer for you. <laughs> All right, not best, but hey, it's an experiment. Even though some of my red layer is not dry yet, um, I waited a little bit, but I'm gonna go ahead and lay down a gray layer. I'm gonna try both gray and a metallic silver just to see which one I like better. So this is the gray. gray. Make a note that the angle you hit your stencil at will also impact your image. So because it's a little further, it kind of makes this kind of slightly blurrier image. But maybe once we have the black layer, this won't look so weird. I might actually do silver on this because I have like a matte gray there. I'm going to do a matte gray here. The further away you are, usually the lighter it is. So you can kind of slowly build it up or just apply it lightly on purpose. So I might actually like how that looks better. Ooh, it's fainter. It's almost like ghostly. Okay, that might actually work out for a ground toe. This one, I think the flat black will look good on this one. Or the flat gray, I mean, rather than a metallic one. I'm going to actually hold this up and do it vertically. So that will also impact it. Okay, so it's still blurry, I think, because it's so distant. I think this one I also want a flat gray. So let me move things around a little bit. I think mine just blended together. Let's take a look. <laughs> yeah, okay, a little blurry. All right, I'm gonna try silver. Uh. 
So you gotta watch out for what kind of paint you're using, whether it's like enamel or latex. It's different things might not dry so well. This is, I think, a car paint that I had lying around to fix a patch on a car, except I got the wrong car brand. So, ooh, pretty silver. Okay, well, that's neat. And I want to do silver on here. Yeah, wow, okay, I don't see anything. Cool. Okay, I'm gonna do my last layer in black. I've gotta set down my stencil, I'm just gonna go for it. Let's see. I don't have black, so I'm gonna use brown. That's the black I had. Apparently it was ancient. And you can kind of hear that this is all of them being, so we'll see if we can get anything. Oh, this is empty too. Oh, no. oh, that's heavy. It's also, I kind of sprayed it at an angle, so I don't imagine that going well. Ooh, spooky. Okay. So not perfect for sure, but hey, it's something. All right, I'm going to try this one. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm gonna keep trying. Let's see what it looks like. I'm gonna tape this down just so I'm gonna uh, try to get it vertically. It a little bit it was able to sit flatter on the paper surface so I think this got one of the best like uh, sort of prints I don't think one of my layers is even on this one but I'll see what it looks like maybe it'll resolve itself So that I think made that all the difference on that one. Right on. I guess I missed part of the raven on that one. I guess I could go ahead and like set that back and try the raven again. I'm careful. <laughs> it's not perfect, but if I just focus on that. There we go. <laughs> Well, I kind of like how light this one is. I'm going to go back into it really quick. Just because this one's so light. Maybe I'll... Oh, this nice to get it bright. Okay. Really want to make that raven darker. Kind of a girl. Yeah. So it's uneven, but we'll see how it looks when it dries. So yeah, a girl and poe for you guys. 